Please thank you so much for joining me today. I thought we would work into a little practice that I am myself calling falling eagle because it involves a little bit of attempted eagle balance work. But we're going to do some eagle stretching and strengthening as well. So it's just an all around class about Garudasana or eagle pose, which should leave your shoulders and hips feeling nice and free and open. No props are required, but if you like to use a block or two and a blanket, you can have those handy and ready uh, for when we are doing our balance or poses on the knees. And when you're ready, you're just going to lie down on your back. And as you lie down on your back, of course, start by getting comfortable. That's the most important thing. Head a little side to side. Make sure your tailbone feels good here, your shoulders. And you can have your knees tented or your legs out straight. First, we're just going to take a few deep breaths. So, as you become situated, close your eyes. And if it's possible today, breathe deeply in through your nose, inflating your belly. You can have your hand on your belly so you can feel the belly rise up as you breathe in. And then sigh out the mouth. Feel the belly sink down. Repeat that three more times. own pace. Whenever you complete that third breath, you can blink your eyes open your knees one and then the other and towards your chest and just rock a few times side to side. Release the sole of your left foot to the floor. Turn the sole of your right foot up to the ceiling. You can hold the outside of your right foot. You can hold the toes. You can hold the ankle or the calf or the thigh, whatever works for you. Draw the right knee down towards the right armpit. And you can keep your left knee tense, or you can extend that left leg out, maybe round a little bit, just starting to feel the inner hip, maybe even the outer hip if you go quite far from side to side. No right or wrong way to move here, you're just kind of feeling into it. Feels pleasantly stretchy. Take another deep breath. And then hold both of your hands behind your right thigh. Pull your belly button towards the floor as you take your right foot away from you. See if you can use that momentum to bring yourself to seated. Cross your right foot to the outside of your left leg. Wiggle around so that your buttocks are flat on the floor. If you want to grab a prop to sit up on, please don't hesitate. Flex your left toes up, reach your arms up as you inhale, and as you exhale, twist to your right. You can hug your right knee, of course, or take your arm to the outside of your right leg. Inhale, lengthen up through your spine, grow tall. Exhale, relax. going to gather your left foot in. Keep your legs crossed if you can. You can always uncross them and then recross them, but the right thigh will go on top. See if you can gather your left knee and gather your right hand. Rock yourself back to the floor. So now you're cross-legged and you can hold your thighs or you can hold your ankles or your calves or your feet. Just make sure if you're holding your feet that what you feel isn't a stretch in your ankle. It's still a stretch in your hips and your legs. And you might not get your legs very close towards you in this first little eagle variation today. 
It's just about crossing the legs as much as you can. If your legs are far away or far apart, that's totally fine. It's even fine if you go into a little more of a pigeon with your right ankle just over the top of your left knee here. You wanna feel your outer right hip a little bit. So find the variation, the bird that works for you. going to uncross your legs, hug both of your knees back and towards your chest. And you could do two different things. Option number one would be just to continue to rock side to side, kind of massaging. Option number two, I think I said option number one is side to side. Option number two is forward and back. And there's no necessary momentum here. You're just going forward and back a few times. We're going to come back onto our back. So don't worry about getting yourself all the way up to seated if you decide to go forward and back. You're just massaging your spine, whichever way you decide to go. Maybe one more rock or roll. And then back onto your back. Hug your knees into your chest. Release your right foot to the floor. Turn the sole of the left foot up. You can hold the foot, the ankle, the calf, or the thigh for your half happy baby. Right knee tented or right leg can extend long. Move around. Or not. I'm personally a big fan, especially kind of early in the day of just really slow, gentle movement to kind of figure out where I want to feel the stretch. But if you find the perfect spot, there's nothing to say you shouldn't stay there. If it feels really good, why not? I think this is all about making the body feel good, helping the body to open up, to be strong and flexible and healthy. practicing yoga is learning what is a feel-good movement in terms of it's a healthy feel-good movement and learning what's like that instant gratification you're going to regret it later a stretch too deep feeling when you're ready you're going to draw that knee back in bring your hands both of them behind your left thigh pull your belly button to the floor take your left foot away from you see if you can rock yourself up to seated flex your right foot cross your left foot to the outside of your right leg wiggle around maybe add a prop underneath your bottom Lift your arms up as you breathe in. As you breathe out, twist to your left. And find a variation. Feel free to lean really far back into this left hand here so you can really lengthen your spine. If you're all hunched over here in an attempt to be close, you're not going to get the benefit of the twist in your spine. When your spine is really long and then you twist, you really create a lot more action for your vertebrae, a lot more beneficial action too. See if this works. If not, you can always uncross your legs and rock yourself or bring yourself to the side to lie down. But maybe, just maybe, you can start to draw that right leg in. It doesn't matter how close the legs are. But you want to see if you can rock back. And you can go to the supine. This is actually is called supine cow face, but it's basically eagle legs here. You can hold thighs, calves, or ankles. If it's better for your body, you can go to pigeon. Get a couple extra birds in this class, not just eagles. We'll be non-discriminatory against different type of birds today. All welcome in this class. Most of the time I feel more like a duck. Occasionally quite graceful, but mostly a little bit clumsy and slightly overexcited about very mundane things. Feel your hips opening up a little bit. And don't hesitate to play. It's not about a specific shape this morning. It's just about getting into the body. Trying things out. And you might fail. You're probably going to fail at some point today. Remember this lying down on the floor because you're going to want to come back here at some point. As the flying ego might turn into the falling ego later. Take another breath. Release 
you're going to unwind your legs, side them back into the chest. You can rock side to side. Hello, baby. Or you can rock a little forward and a little backward. You want to do kitty in the boat? If you have a kitty, you can put a kitty in your boat. Rock backwards, or forwards. And for a few times, you're going to rock all the way up. And you're going to rock yourself to seated and come to a cross-legged seat. And of course, feel free to sit up onto a prop if you like. Once you come to that cross-legged seat, reach your arms up as you inhale. As you exhale, twist to your left. And again, you can lean quite far back here. Lift to the center of your chest, feel the length of your spine. And then inhale back to center. As you exhale, twist to the other side. Feel free to lean quite far back so you can expand your spine. And then inhale, come back to the center line. As you exhale, you're going to fold forwards. And as you fold forward, you can always grab a prop or want to rest your body in some way. And you can just let yourself hang. You can prop yourself up. Feel free to walk your fingertips as far out in front of you as feels pleasant. Feel free to move a little side to side. And then on an inhale, you're gonna walk your fingertips back in towards you. You are going to switch the crossing of your legs. Reach your arms up as you breathe in. As you breathe out, bring your right hand down, bring your left arm over, find a little bit of a side bend. And feel free to look up if you want or not. As you inhale, bring your arms back to the center line. As you exhale, lean over to the other side. You can probably hear. Looks like Kitty is having a little bath over here. I'm not sure if you can totally see him or if he's slightly out of frame. He's very relaxed. He's ready for his falling eagle. Inhale back to the center line. Bring both of your arms up overhead. As you exhale again, you're going to fold forward. Just getting equally into both of those hips in this seated forward fold. And again, it doesn't matter how far forward you come. It doesn't matter if you are a few inches or a few feet. Do you feel your hips? Do you feel your lower back? Does it feel good in there? That's what matters. to move or to be still. When you're ready, you're going to walk your fingertips in towards you. Roll your shoulders back, gather your knees in, and bring yourself to standing at the front of your mat. And as you come to standing, spread your toes nice and wide, give them a wiggle, give your heels a little pedal, get comfortable here, relax your shoulders, and then reach your arms up over your head as you breathe in, and as you fold forward, breathe out. From here, you're just going to dangle for a few breaths. So again, feel free to bring any kind of prop into play to put your hands on. You can rest your forearms on your thighs or your hands on your shins, or you can just hang. Where do you feel a pleasant sense of traction lengthening your spine? Even if you're quite flexible, keep your knees a little bit soft for this first forward fold. Do you feel your low back starting to grow some space? Inhale, you're going to find a halfway lift, sliding your hands maybe up onto your shins or onto your thighs. And on your exhale, fold forward back. Slow ragdoll on your inhale to the sky. Take several breaths to come all the way up to standing. Think about tucking your tailbone down and rolling up through the lower back, the mid back, the upper back, the shoulders, and finally the head. Turn the palms forward as you inhale. As you exhale, let your fingertips grow heavy towards the earth. As you inhale, bring your arms overhead. As you exhale, fold again forward. 
As you inhale, find halfway lift. Feel free to use a block here or two blocks. Step your right foot behind your left foot, crossing over. If you can, it's okay if you can't and your foot is just slightly behind. Go to the distance that feels good. Fold forward here, bend both of your knees. Maybe you walk your fingertips a little bit over towards your left. As you're ready, you're gonna walk your fingertips back to the center, uncross that right foot. Inhale, find a halfway lift, so you're really lengthening your spine, you can even wiggle your buns a little bit. As you exhale, fold. You're gonna cross your left foot over or behind. Maybe you walk your fingertips to the left, maybe not. Bend your knees a little bit. Feel out your hips. And then walk the fingertips back to the center line, uncross. Inhale, halfway lift. As you exhale, plant your hands down, walk or step or hop back to downward dog or table pose. Take a few deep breaths here, moving around a little bit. You can do the foot pedal. You could do sways of your knee. If you're in a downward facing dog and you want an extra little stretch for your hips and the sides of your waist, inhale, lift up onto your tippy toes. As you exhale, turn your heels a little over to the left, bend your knees, drop your hips a little back as you lean a little bit over to the right, but keep pressing down through your left hand so you feel a deep stretch on the left side. And then inhale, you can come back to the center, lift up onto your tippy toes, hit turn to the right, you bend your knees and you lower your hips a little bit back and to the left. Press down into your right hand, feel that nice side stretch. And then inhale, come back to the center, we'll all meet in table or downward facing. Inhale here. As you exhale, knees come to the floor. If they're not already there, make sure your hands are beyond your shoulders. Then slide your shoulders over your wrists, low plank. Untuck your toes as you exhale, lower to the floor. Slide your hands back by your thighs. Nose hovers just above the mat. Press the feet down, half locust. Inhale, lift the center of your chest. Exhale, lower down. Inhale again, lift the center of your chest. But now see if maybe you can lift your right leg as well. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift the chest. Maybe you can lift the left leg. Lower down. And now maybe you lift up the chest and both of the legs at the same time as you inhale. Exhale, bring your hands under your shoulders. You can go close or you can go wide if you prefer. Cobra pose. Exhale to release. Hands come under the shoulders. Tuck the toes. Come back table or downward facing dog. On an inhale, float your right foot to the sky. On your exhale, step your right foot up to the front of the mat. Bring your back knee to the floor. Feel free to cushion it for extra comfort. Press your fingertips down into the mat or into a block. Lift yourself up. Hands to hips or arms to the sky. Lean a little forward into the front knee. If you like a deeper stretch, lift the center of your chest. Inhale here. As you exhale, you're going to pull your hips back a little bit so you're a little more stable. Your right knee is more above your right ankle. If you went quite far forward, bring your hands down parallel to the floor. Take your right arm on top of your left arm. You can create a little lever and pull your right arm across the body. Or you can take the backs or the fronts of the hands together for eagle. If at this point you want to lean forward into that front knee, again, go for it. Just make sure that your belly button is engaged and there's no discomfort in your lower back as you do that. Inhale here. As you exhale, you're going to unwind your arms. Your left hand comes to the floor, your right arm comes to the sky, and you find a twist. So of course, feel free to place it a block underneath the hand on the floor. Inhale here. As you exhale, fold forward. Plant your fingertips to the floor or your hands to blocks. Tuck your back toe. Lift your back knee. You're going to step up. And you can step your left foot next to your right foot, or if you feel balanced enough, you can step your left foot behind your right foot before rolling to the sky. So make sure you don't feel too wobbly here. Press into both of your big toes and see if you can come all the way up to standing. If you came up with the feet uncrossed, now cross the left foot behind the, the right foot. I'll turn so I'm facing you. Standing as much with the feet crossed over as you can, even if it's only foot behind one left foot, well, slightly behind the right foot. Reach your arms up as you inhale, squeeze your inner thighs together. As you exhale, bring your palms parallel to the floor again. Cross your right arm again on top. Pull across. 
backs or fronts of hands together. Keep squeezing the inner thighs together, but keep pressing into the mounds of your big toes. Okay, so first standing variation of Eagle Pose. Take another breath. And then inhale, you're going to unwind if you move away from the top of your mat. As you uncross your feet, you just walk back up there. And as you exhale, you fold. Inhale, you find half body lift. As you exhale, you plant your hands, you walk, you step, you hop, you make your way back to the back of the mat table or dog in the way that feels best. And again, this first one, we're gonna linger in our table or our dog and just move around. Feels nice. And if it doesn't feel nice, you could always try child's pose or lying on your belly. But this, this part should feel like really nice. Should it feel like unwrapping the perfect present? How did they know it was exactly what you wanted? Or a little vinyasa. As you inhale, come forward to plank, and you could do the low variation again, or you could do a high plank, your choice. As you exhale, again, lower all the way to the floor. We're going to go into the locust. We're going to do it backwards this time. So we'll start with full locust. Reach your arms back. If you'd like, interlace your fingers behind you. Inhale, lift the body all the way up. Feet, head. Exhale to release. Inhale, lift your torso. Maybe lift your left leg. Inhale, lift your torso. Maybe you can also lift your right leg. Release. Inhale, lift just the upper body. Press the tops of the feet to the floor. Exhale, release. Hands come down. They can be right under the shoulders or wider if you prefer. Cobra pose as you inhale. Exhale, let it go. Hands to the floor. Push back to table. Or downward facing dog. Taking a deep breath. Left foot close to the sky as you inhale. As you exhale, step that left foot to the front of the mat, right knee to the floor, adding any props that you need. Press down to the floor, lift up hands to hips, or arms to the sky. We'll spend a couple of breaths here. Feel free, again, to stretch a little forward if you want. Lift your heart, relax your shoulders. Make sure that your front knee is right over or slightly behind your front ankle so you can press down into that left foot for stability as you start to move your arms forward. Left arm crosses across the body and you can create that little weaver or you can wrap your arms together like an eagle. And if you like, it's time to lean forward again into that front knee, getting that little hip flexor stretch on the right side or you can just focus on your shoulders here in this stretch. Feel the space between your shoulder blades expanding. Inhale, kick. As you exhale, you're going to unwind your arms. Come all the way forward. Tuck your back toe. Lift your back knee. You're going to soften that back knee and you're going to step up and you can step next to the left foot with the right foot, or you can try to step behind and roll up with the cross legs. Be careful of your balance. If you try that, it can be a little tricky. Roll all the way up. If you haven't yet crossed the right foot behind the left foot, you want to be right foot behind left foot. Feet as close or as far apart as is possible to you. Squeeze your thighs, press into your big toes, reach your arms in front. Left arm again on top, you can pull across. Or bind, and I want you to pick the one that feels good to your shoulders. If it feels good to your shoulders to go all wound up, great, do that. But if it feels better in your shoulder to pull across, why not do that? You want, again, at the end of the class, your shoulders and your hips, especially, your whole body to feel free and open. Don't do stuff that makes you crunch up and feel uncomfortable. Lift up through the crown of your head. And from that tall place, go ahead and release. Uncross your feet. You made your way away from the front of the mat. Come back. Inhale your arms up. As you exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. As you exhale, plant your hands down, step or hop. Or walk to the back of the mat, table or downward facing dog. You could stay there and simply move. Or you can join me in the half vinyasa, inhaling to plank. Exhale. 
exhaling knees up or down to the floor. Straight through cobra or upward facing dog, or if you like that locust, you can take just one. Inhale. As you exhale, come back long in table or downward facing dog. Inhale, float your right foot to the sky. As you exhale, step your right foot forward between your hands. You can come up into crescent lunge today, or if you prefer, step your left foot a little to the left and drop your left heel to the floor for warrior one, wherever you feel stable and strong. Press into your right heel, lift all the way back up to the sky as you breathe in. Square the hips as you breathe out. If you need to adjust the angle of your back foot, please do. Front knee over front ankle. Again, you could be in warrior one or crescent, whatever feels good to your body this morning. Arms lift up. Shoulders relax, lift the center of your chest. We're going to start the potentially falling part of the practice. So remind yourself that it's fine to fall. In fact, it's good to fall. Keeps you humble. When you're ready, you inhale where you are. And as you exhale, you fold forward. You're going to sweep your arms back, reach the crown of your head forward. Inhale, lift up. Twice more. Exhale to fold. Inhale to lift. Last one. All right, here's where it gets tricky. As you lean forward, keep drawing your arms back. Lean into that right foot. See if you can lift your left foot in. And if you need to bring it along the floor, that's fine. Maybe you can lift that left foot all the way up. And you can do a couple of things. Option number one would be cross your left foot behind your right foot. Squeeze your inner thighs together. Bring your arms in front of you. Right arm over the top. Eagle pose. Option number two, if you feel quite stable, is to take the left foot in front of the right foot. And maybe you need to balance that left toe on the floor or on a block. Maybe you can float that left leg. Don't do anything further because all we're going to do is unwind now. Reach that left leg back behind you. Feel free to use props underneath your hands as you shoot that left foot far back. Plant the left foot on the floor. Plant the hands on the floor. And step back to downward facing dog. Take a few breaths here. If you like, you could take a child's pose or a rest. Or you could take a half vinyasa if you want. Whatever makes you feel good before we go to the other side. all meet in table or downward facing dog. And then from there we're going to float the left foot to the sky. Step the left foot to the front of the mat. Your choice, crescent lunge or right foot slightly further to the right. Set the back heel down for warrior one. When you feel stable, lift all the way up. Square your hips. Your choice. Find the one that feels better. Do you like warrior one today or do you like crescent? I'm always curious what my body will like. Some days I love warrior one because I get that nice extra stretch in my hip. I also feel quite a bit more sturdy and stable here on warrior one. But this morning my hips are quite tight, so that crescent lunge, oh, so much easier on my hips today. I overdid it a little bit yesterday. Just a little bit tired. Lift the center of your chest. Relax your shoulders. Hold forward three times before we try that little balance again. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, hinge of the hips, reach the arms behind you. Inhale to lift. Exhale to fold. One more like that. Now we work into that little catchy, perhaps flying, perhaps falling eagle. As you lean forward, you bring all of your weight into your left foot. And you see how gracefully you can step up, which sometimes is quite graceful and sometimes terribly ungraceful. And you could go right foot behind, or you could go right foot in front. See what works for your body. You could cross the right thigh over the left thigh and squeeze the thighs together, floating the right foot. That's all you need to do. Maybe you add arms, left arm over the top. Take just a deep breath, and we're going to let it go. And you're going to keep a little softness in the standing leg as you shoot that right leg back behind you. Plant your hands. Right foot lands far back at the back of the mat. Hands plant down and you step back. Downward dog or table pose. Again, feel free to take a little rest here. Or if you feel quite fiery, maybe you take a half vinyasa. Or hold a pull leg. Maybe you just spend a few moments in a back bend, releasing your 
your shoulders. Do what feels just right. And then on the next breath or two, we'll all meet in table or downward facing dog. And we're going to try that again. When you're ready, your right foot floats to the sky as you inhale. Your right foot steps to the front of the mat as you exhale. Your choice of crescent or warrior one. And you inhale up to the sky. Woo. Sometimes your crescent is quite wobbly. As you exhale, you fold forward. Into the hips. Inhale to lift. You're going to go straight into the balance this time. So you're going to fold all the way forward. Press your right foot down. Lift up. Maybe you cross in front, maybe you cross behind, maybe your thighs can cross together. This will be the most challenging one because you're floating your foot. Maybe this time you can bend your knees as you bring the right arm on top. And if you are simply struggling to balance, forget about the arms and let them help you balance. When you're ready, you unwind, not holding for long. You reach that left foot far back behind you, plant your hands down and step back. Table or downward facing dog. Take a couple breaths before we go to the other side. When you're ready, left foot floats. Left foot steps forward. Crescent lunge or warrior one. Inhale to come all the way up. Square your hips. One hand to the hip and fold as you exhale. And lift as you inhale. Kind of preparing that left foot for balance. And now you go for it. You lean all the way forward. Weight into the left foot. Lift the right foot. Hug the right knee into the chest. Right thigh could cross on top. You could simply put the foot on floor. You can always cross the right foot behind if you prefer. Maybe this time you bend your knees a little bit. In any of these positions, left arm would cross over the right arm if you want to go arms as well. Remember, it's not about the hold. It's not if you stay here. It's that if you fall or if you fly, you smile. Uncross, unwind, reach, 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 reach back. Place the foot down, place the hands down, step back, table or downward facing dog. Maybe this time if you haven't tried it yet, you go for your child's pose for a few breaths. And examine how you feel. Does that feel a little flyy? feel free and powerful or did you feel the wobbles and the falls whatever it was know that it's exactly what it is meant to be also know that if you didn't like exactly what was meant to be you get another try we're going to take a little break we're going to take a little stretch out and then we're going to come back and do that one more time so you are craving a do-over and it wasn't very satisfying, don't worry, we're going to do it one more. When you're ready, come back to your table or your downward facing dog. You're going to walk or step your feet up to the front of the mat. And then you're going to take your feet wider than your hips, toes out, heels in for a squat. And you can do any variation of your squat as usual, your horse, your spider, or your molasana, your garland. And just take a couple breaths here. And then in the squat, we're going to take a little bit of a twist. So if you're down here like me in the garland, what you'll do is you put your left hand on the floor. Your left upper arm is kind of inside your left thigh, and you twist and you open to the right. If you are in your spider, you're going to reach your left hand a little further in front of you as you twist. And if you're in your horse, you can put your left arm on your left thigh as you open up. And then you're just going to do the other side. Left arm to left thigh for horse. Hands floor for spider or garland. Spider, you probably want your hand to be further forward. Garland, you want your hand to be further in. When you're ready, come back to the center line. Press your fingertips down. Lift your hips up. Heel toe your feet a comfortable distance apart. Exhale to fold. And as you inhale, roll yourself all the way up to the sky. Exhale, hands in front of the heart. Soften your gaze. Close your eyes. And take a nice, deep, full Everything that just happened is the past. Whether it was what you consider to be a success or what you consider to be a failure, it is now done with. 
look forward. And we're resolved to be happy with whatever the results of this next attempt are. You know, it's hard to be happy when you fall. It's quite challenging. In fact, it might be far more challenging to fall because the more difficult yoga when you fall to pick yourself up and smile than when it is successful, that's easy. The falling is the work. The wobbling is the work. And when you're ready, open your eyes, reach your arms overhead, and exhale, fold forward. Inhale, bend. You exhale, you plant your hands, and you walk, or you step, or you hop back, table or dog. You're welcome to skip your half vinyasa and hang out. Or you can join me inhaling forward to plank, exhaling to the floor. You can take cobra or sphinx or upward dog, or you can take locust again. You'll be opening up the back of the body. And then when you're ready, press your hands down and we'll meet back in table or downward facing dog. Right foot to the sky as you inhale. Step your right foot forward as you exhale. Plant your fingertips down, shrug your shoulders back, and lift all the way up. Relax your hips, relax your shoulders. One fold. Exhale to come forward. Inhale to come up. And then we lean forward and we reach into that balance. If you see if you can draw the knee in. And you feel your butt wobbling from side to side. And you cross that leg. You cross the foot. Whatever variation works. Maybe you bend the knees a little bit. If you want, this time you can hook the foot behind. If that's something that's in your practice, that's comfortable. Feel free to add arms. Right arm on top. Hold for a deep breath. Tuck your belly button in. Doesn't matter if you are rock steady or if you are currently lying on the floor. Smile. When you're ready, you unwind from wherever you are and you make your way back to that long, low lunge, fingertips to the floor, left hand back, or excuse me, left foot back behind you, hands to the floor, right foot steps back, table or dog. Do what you need to do before we take that second breath. When you're ready, left foot to the sky, left foot steps forward. Crescent lunge, warrior one, inhale all the way up. Take a breath or two here. Get set up. Get stable. And then when you're ready, hinge of the hips. One fold forward. And lift up. And then go for it. Whatever happens, happens. Lean forward. Lift. Draw the knee in. Cross forward. Cross back. You can cross just the ankles or you can cross the thighs. You could bend the knee if you've crossed the thighs. You could hook the foot if you want. Anywhere you are, you can add left arm over the top of the right arm. And this time, hold for a breath or two. Enjoy whatever is happening. Whether your eagle is flying or your eagle is plummeting. When you're ready, you unwind yourself. And you go all the way back. Reach that right foot behind you. Hands plant down. Right foot plants down. Step back. Table. Or downward facing dog. Take a few breaths. And then bring your knees all the way down to the floor. Slide your shoulders over the wrists. Low plank. Untuck your toes. Lower all the way down to the floor. Inhale. Find cobra pose. And then as you exhale, lie all the way down. Rest your head your forehead, that is, on the floor or on the cushion of your hands. And then taking your feet about hip distance apart, so they might need to go a little wider than they are currently, first just rock your butt a little side to side. Loosen it up, let it go. And if you didn't feel foolish yet, you should feel foolish now. All right, and then from here, fold at your knees, bring the soles of your feet up towards the sky, and now rock your feet a little from side to side, massaging your quadriceps. No windshield wipers, but upside down. 
I'm kind of inhibited by my wall here, but you can be going further over to the side if that feels good. Slide your right knee up and out to the side for a tree frog. You can, of course, flex your foot or you can bring the sole of your foot to your thigh. And today, you could stay right here. You could just enjoy the stretch in your back. That might feel plenty, resting your head to the floor or to your hands. If you want to add on a stretch for your shoulders, you lift your torso up and you're going to spread your right arm underneath your left arm as you're twisting away from your bent knee. You reach up and you take that arm underneath your body. And as you come here, you may find that, oh, this is, this is quite intense. You can always bring a block or a blanket or a prop underneath your head here. That can feel quite nice. If it's possible for your head to go all the way to the floor, you can do that as well. And if that twist doesn't feel right, don't worry. Another opportunity to stretch your shoulders. is just so relieved it's like yes let, let us lie down oh that feels so nice sometimes the body still has some kind of lingering energy like that tick 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 sound you hear when you turn your car off it's stuff is still happening in there it's still quite active it takes a while to uh, decompress lie down for a few moments. Any position that feels good. I'm reaching my arms back, but you can equally well rest your head on your hands or reach your arms straight forward if you like. Just notice the difference between right and left. yourself down that might feel uh, just focus on the hip just relaxing that left hip so nice and you can go more into the shoulders lifting up a little bit left arm underneath the right armpit and don't worry if you don't like this variation of the threaded needle we are going to do another little shoulder stretch after this so don't feel like you're missing out if you're not threading the needle you're going to get more chances more options mindfulness yoga regularly we still don't listen to our bodies a lot of the time it's nice to have a dedicated opportunity time set aside to listen to what's happening in your body to be aware of what's happening in your body treat your body like a Listen to how its day was, what's going on with it. Support it. If it's a love, restricting, 
and attention that it needs to be a good friend to you as well. Unwind yourself. And again, just take a little rest. Maybe arrange your arms differently than you did last time. And if you're ready, slide your hands under your shoulders. Let's go for one more cobra. And you can keep your hands right under your shoulders. Or again, today you have the option to go wide, maybe even angling your hands out. Shrug your shoulders really far back, lift the center of your chest. There should be so much space between the bottoms of your ears and the tops of your shoulders. And then exhale to fold. Slide the hands under the shoulders, press back. Table pose. And here again, we're going to do our threaded needle. So you're going to lift your right arm up and out to the side as you inhale. And as you exhale, thread that right arm underneath the left arm. And you can always place the head on a block. Now, you can stay right here, tenting your left fingertips or reaching your left arm out in front of you. If you want to go a little deeper, you can tuck your right toes under and reach your right foot to the back of the mat. Press down, stabilize your hips. You can always take your left arm in any of these positions around behind your back. Or you can lift your left arm up into the sky in this little dynamic twist. Unwind yourself. Reach your right arm up and out to the side. And then place your right hand on the block. Same thing to the left. Left arm up and out. And then thread the left arm underneath the right arm. And you can stay right here. Hands on the floor. Fingertips tenting. Head on block. Hands could come in front. You could always go deeper. Tuck your left toes. Reach your left foot back. And you feel there's a little inherent instability in your hips. You have to suck your right hip in. You have to squeeze your inner thighs together here. And if you want to go even further, lifting that left arm up or taking your arm behind your back, you again have to stabilize a little bit. Even in this shoulder stretch, there's a little bit of core work if you want it. You kind of feel like this. Now you feel like you're really the fallen eagle. You go crash land into the floor and you are just a heap, a heap of eagle. When you're ready, you're going to unwind yourself. Whoop. Maybe a little back that time. Lift your up, left arm up and out as you inhale. And then as you exhale, bring that hand down. Walk your hands back towards you, bringing yourself to seated. You're going to swing those legs out in front of you. And we're going to come one more variation of eagle for our legs. So you have your legs in front. Give them a little wiggle, a little shake. Feel free to sit up onto a prop. And take your right leg again to the outside of your left leg. Now, lift up here. If you feel a lot of tension in your hips, you might stay right here. If you feel quite good, you can take your right ankle and start to guide it out to the right, lowering your right knee towards your left knee for a little shoelace or half eagle e legs. This is essentially what you're doing with a little bit of different orientation of the thigh bone into the hip socket when you're standing up. And you might stay right here. If it's quite intense, you might lean back. If it's quite gentle, you might come forward. If you want even a little more, you can always go for the faux variation. This is actually the same thing we did on the floor. You can fold your left foot in. And if you do that, just make sure that both of your butt cheeks are on the floor. And again, it might be quite intense. And you might lean a little back. You might think, oh yeah, this is easy. I can go forward here. Feel free to prop yourself anywhere that needs propping, underneath the bottom knee, between the knees, underneath the butt. Feel your hips. Enjoy the intensity. Relax your shoulders and your jaw. I think of this, I know I've mentioned it quite a few times, but it pops into my head whenever I do it. It's the root canal for your hips. You can just feel all the gunk, all the crap that's in there. It's just getting hoovered out, getting rid of it, taking away all of the bad, the rot, the old, the yuck, creating space 
so it can be removed. Use your hands as needed to help you unwind your legs. Place the soles of your feet on the floor. And then you do a few windshield wipers from side to side to loosen you up before you go to the other, the other direction. And you're going to reach your legs forward. And you'll cross your left foot to the outside of your right foot. And again, if your hips are on the tight side, just crossing over and then holding as you sit up tall or even lean a little forward can really feel quite intense. You can always stay there. You can always go a little further. Right, uh, excuse me, left knee towards right knee. So shoelace pose. And you can wiggle around. Again, here you want to make sure both butt cheeks stay on the floor. And go forward. Back. Shoelace also has the nice advantage of giving you a hamstring stretch on your left side if you're working to lengthen your hamstring. Or you can go for some really intense hip work if you want. Fold <laughs> that bottom foot in. And wiggle around here. Don't feel like it needs to be perfect. The stacking of the knees is a practice. The getting forward is a practice. And just like falling versus flying an eagle, whatever happens, happens. doesn't say anything about us as human beings if we feel that we have been successful in the pose or we feel that we have failed the pose other than it indicates to us how we are valuing our practice. And just because your body can or can't do it today, does that say anything about you? Maybe it says you did something yesterday or you have a difference in your body that allows you to do or not do certain things. In the grand scheme of things, is it really important that you balanced on one foot or that you fell over? It's not. It's that you tried it and you were okay with whatever happened. And not just that, that you were okay enough with it that whatever happened, you We'll try it again. It's not like you did it and it was you were good at it, so you don't need to do it again. You might be able to do it better next time. It's not like you did it and you fell spectacularly and now you're not good at it and you're never going to do it again. It's that you can go back to this place with no expectations of what will happen. little attachment to what happened today. Today was just a practice. Tomorrow and the next day and the next week will be different. When you're ready, unwind. <sighs> Maybe take a few more windshield wipers. And then make your way to the middle of your mat and lie yourself all the way down. Back to where we started, hug your knees to your chest. And now we'll go for that full happy baby soles of the feet to the sky, holding feet or calves or ankles or thighs as we rock a little bit. And just deciding if there's any other pose or shape that you need your practice today, you can add that in. And when you're ready, you can make your way towards Shavasana, towards rest. Adding as usual any props or accessories, anything that makes this feel good to your body. And just like the beginning, through the nose if it works, deep breath, maybe a hand on the belly to feel it expand, and out through the mouth, notice the belly sink down, three more,
few minutes. I encourage you to hang out here in your Shavasana. And it's time to come back to your day. Take a deep breath in. Maybe reach your arms up over your head today. Maybe point your toes. Maybe breathe out, roll your wrists and your ankles. Rolling yourself when you're ready all the way over to one side. Or making your way to your most comfortable seat today. Allow your hands to come in front of your heart and close with that deep breath together. In through nose, out through mouth. On three. One. Two, three. <sighs> Namaste. Thank you so much for sharing your practice and your time. Have a wonderful rest of your day.